Welcome. So we're going to start off with um, the kind of simple closed economy model. So this is the classical model in the long run, sometimes called the aggregate model, uh, usually early on in people's intermediate macroeconomic course. I did an overview in a previous video that I'll link in uh, that I'll link to in the description. So if you want a kind of a broad overview of everything that sets up the model, go for that. Uh, in this one, we're going to just have a shock to the model. So like an economic scenario, uh, we're going to have a fiscal expansion and then see what happens to this market of loanable funds uh, and so forth. Okay, so uh, start off with a fiscal expansion. Well, actually starting off with a model. Um, along the vertical axis, we have the real interest rate. Uh, along this vertical axis of the market for loanable funds. Uh, so these are all points here representing the real interest rate. Along the horizontal axis, we have investments and savings. So this is kind of like a dollar amount. So uh, the green line here stands for our savings rate. So savings is going to be equal to national savings. So national savings is income output here, Y, uh, less consumption. And consumption is some function of disposable income, the difference between output or real income and uh, taxes, uh, and government spending. So savings is the difference between how much money you get and what the, this economy spends its money on. So in this simple economy, we have uh, consumption and government spending. Um, because in our little model, um, all the inputs to the production function are fixed, so capital and labor is fixed, so this is this output's fixed. Consumption is fixed because output's fixed and our taxes are fixed. Uh, and then government spending is just set by the government, so that's fixed. So for the savings, national savings, we just have a straight line representing the amount of savings in, this, in the economy. Uh, on the demand side, we have our investment curve here. It's downward sloping, representing the marginal product of capital. Um, it's basically saying that, uh, suppose you, given that uh, there's real interest rate that's really, really high, you know, how much demand for uh, savings, how much demand to uh, borrow money and put it into investment is there going to be? It's going to be relatively low. So the real interest rate is basically the cost of borrowing money. And so if firms see a high cost of borrowing money, they're going to borrow rel relatively less. And so investment's going to be kind of down at this lower end. However, if the real interest rate is relatively low, that means the cost of borrowing money to invest it into things that firms put their money into, into capital, uh, it means it's gonna, uh, firms are gonna wanna borrow quite a bit of money, uh, and so investment's gonna be relatively high. So this line right here, the investment demand, uh, the demand for loanable funds, the investment curve here is gonna be this downward sloping reflecting the marginal product of capital. Um, reflecting the marginal product of capital in that at low levels of capital, the marginal product of capital is really high, uh, where at high levels of capital, the marginal product of uh, capital is relatively low. Um, Go, go look at the, the overview video if you're confused by that. Just know that this is the demand for loanable funds, basically saying that if it costs a lot of money to borrow money, um, then people aren't going to borrow much money. And if it's really cheap to borrow money, then they're going to borrow a lot. Okay, simple as that. Um, and then we're going to have an equilibrium real interest rate. So the real interest rate is going to be such that the supply of loanable funds is equal to the demand of loanable funds. Um, so, you know, like I said for... Um, quantity demanded, sorry, for the supply of loanable funds, all of these inputs are fixed, right? Uh, and then investment is just some function of the real exchange rate. So this real exchange rate is going to set itself so that it equilibrates right here. Um, okay, so we, we get a shock. What's going to be the effect of this shock? We have a fiscal expansion. So what does a fiscal expansion mean? That basically means somehow the government is uh, spending more money, the government the amount of money that the government has fiscal expansion harms the government's budget balance. So that could either be an expansion of government spending or a reduction in taxes. In either case, what is the effect of those two things? What's the effect of a fiscal expansion? Well, if you increase government spending, what happens over here? So government spending goes up. There's a negative sign in front of G. And so the savings rate goes down. Uh, and then you get a similar story for um, taxes. So taxes are inside here, so in disposable income. So if taxes decrease, that means this person's disposable income increases. So they are spending more. So if they're, uh, if they're spending more, the consumption's more, uh, then their savings rate's going to go down. So in either case, uh, you know, fiscal expansion, whether that's through government spending or a reduction in taxes, the savings rate's going to go down. 
So to show, um, oh, and then investment, you know, is unchanged because investment is just this function of investment as some function of the real interest rate. So what we're going to want to do is show the change in the savings rate. So I'm going to add a little subscript to our little savings line here, uh, a little sub naught to indicate where we started off with. Uh, we're going to have another one over here. So savings sub one. To show where things change to. So we had a decreasing savings, so that's an inward shift in the savings line. I'll add a little arrow to. So you got savings was here, and then the fiscal expansion led to a reduction savings, so savings not here. So what you're going to have is um, the real interest rate is going to have to adjust. It's going to re equilibrate so that it's up over to this new level. So we started off. At a real interest rate of r sub naught, and now we have a real interest rate of r sub one. Also, investment was down at this level before, so i sub naught, and now investment has been reduced to this level, i sub one. So, what's the effect of the fiscal expansion? Well, we have that reduction savings. Um, and then the reduction in savings leads to an increase uh, in the real exchange rate and a reduction in investment. So yeah, I mean, the, the answer is as simple as this. Um, we have an increase, um, we have a fiscal expansion, so either an increase in government spending or a decrease in taxes that shifts in the savings schedule, uh, and we have an increase in the real interest rate and a decrease in savings. So intuitively, what might cause that? Well, uh, maybe one explanation might be that if in order for the government to increase uh, spending, they need to somehow borrow that money from somewhere. So they, the idea is that they borrow the money from the open market, because that's the only place to borrow money. Um, so they borrow money from the open market, um, so they're cutting into a bit of this market for loanable funds. So the amount of savings is reduced because that money is going to the government and not to this market, um, uh, which drives up by uh, the reduction in, in supply is going to drive up the real interest rate and reduce investment. So sometimes we say that uh, sometimes we say that some an action taken by the government that reduces savings uh, crowds out investment, which we can see right here. Uh, so that's it. Hopefully that's helpful. I'll get a couple more shock video, shocks to the economy example posted in uh, a little bit. Okay. Thanks. Bye.